This is your website essentials checklist that you want to make sure you're following as we start the new year. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, so a lot of what I'm going to be covering is for websites that are especially built on WordPress. But if your site is built on a platform other than WordPress, keep watching as you're probably still going to find the video useful. Okay, the first thing that I would love for you to check is to see whether you have some of the most basic infrastructure in place. These are tools that regardless of what kind of website, blog, or business you're operating, you will need. And these tools include an SEO plugin. I can vouch for all-in-one SEO. You're going to be using this to take care of entry and advanced level SEO details about your pages and posts. You're going to need a caching plugin. I've been using WP Rocket for many years now, and I'm very pleased with it. You're also going to need an image optimization tool. Uh, here, I can recommend ShortPixel. It works really well. I actually have a video showing you how to properly optimize images before you upload them to WordPress. And of course, you also need to enable Google Analytics on your website. And not just that, but I find that Google Analytics is, how would I describe it? Um, clunky and difficult to work with. If you're building on WordPress, I would suggest you look into Monster Insights as a great Google Analytics alternative. And if you're building outside of WordPress, Fathom Analytics works really well as well. Google Search Console is crucial as well. This tool you're gonna be using to see how your content is performing online. And it's also a great tool to see if there's something fishy happening with your content. If something is broken, if you've got broken links, Google Search Console keeps you up to date. I have a more in-depth video covering Google Search Console coming out soon and how I personally like using it. Uh, so if you want to be notified when that comes out, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And last but not least, this one is especially meant for my fellow WordPress users. Please download WordFence or Security, either one, perhaps even consider subscribing to their premium versions if you have the funds for it. Um, but at the very least, get either one of these plugins free versions installed on your sites as, you know, their basic firewalls and two-factor authorization features can stop nasty malware from infecting your businesses, which believe it or not, it, you know, these things happen. I feel like these tools are automatic things that I know I need to install and have up and running when I'm building a new website. Like I already know by heart that I need my SEO plugin, my caching plugin, my image optimizer and so forth and so on. And of course, if you're building on WordPress, then you also want to make sure you have a proper page builder, you know, a proper theme, a lead generation form builder. In essence, what I typically do is I just download Thrive Themes uh, product manager as you know, th that is going to give me access to Thrive Architect, Thrive Leads, and all of the more advanced tools that I need to create my actual online business. So this first section takes care of all of the infrastructure essentials that you need. The next thing that I want to talk about is strategy. Here at Thrive Themes, we've already planned out all of our content strategy for the first quarter of the year. Yes, things can change here and there depending on development, you know, things, things happen uh, every now and then, and uh, there's always room for uncertainty. But the truth is, we already know the marketing campaigns and the overall game plan that we need to follow, you know, over the course of the next few months. And there's no reason for you not to do the same. Now, I understand that game plans are conducted in a different manner when you're working on your own, as opposed to working with dozens of other people. Uh, they're obviously also going to be different depending on the kind of business that you're running. Uh, when I was running my own agency, for example, with uh, four other people helping me out, I used to do things in a different way in which I do them here at Thrive Themes, but there are still things that you can do and that you can plan um, as to how your, you know, the next few months are going to look for you, whether you're a solopreneur or you're working as a small business, at least from a marketing standpoint. For example, you can do what we've done, which is plan out what content pieces you're going to be working on, regardless of what may happen with your product or service. You know, do some keyword research, study which keywords you want to try to rank for and set yourself some guidelines as to how many content pieces you're going to be creating and how often you're going to be posting them. If you're trying to build your brand using social media, you can even schedule social media posts in advance. Uh, I know of Twitter influencers that use tools like um, Content Studio to literally schedule their tweets like a month in advance. That way they can just bulk write a bunch of them and schedule them to go out in, you know, two, three, four weeks uh, in advance and so forth and so on. In fact, you can even do this with your website too. You can bulk write a bunch of blog posts and schedule them inside WordPress to go out 
on a certain day. This is something that, to be honest, I'm gonna try to do myself this year. I've allocated some writing times each week where I'm simply, you know, where I simply open up my Notion dashboard and I start writing about web design, software development, and once I have five or six blog posts written up, um, I can just fire up Thrive Architect on my site, make them look nice, and schedule them to go out once or twice each week. It takes effort, it takes discipline, but hey, at least I know it's gonna get done. There's one last thing that I would encourage you to look into, which are your funnels, whether they already exist or not. Something that I've always struggled with myself is keeping up with all of the different funnels that I need to manage. On one side, I have my sales funnels, which are made up of my sales pages and how they connect with my checkout system that process payments and then un unlocks access to whatever product or service people are buying from me. And then of course, you also need to take care of your marketing funnels. These are probably the most tedious ones to manage because there's typically several of them in place with your sales funnels once you set them up once for the most part you don't have to touch them ever again unless you're you know running a sale or changing prices or something but marketing funnels such as you know something as simple as a newsletter opt-in form you need to consistently monitor and adjust depending on who is making use of them right if someone is subscribing to your email list because they're interested in a specific guide or a specific lead magnet you're probably going to put them on a different email sequence to that of someone who is interested in signing up to your email newsletter and so I would love for you to think of what the journey of someone who's making use of one of your marketing funnels looks like from the moment they see you online to the moment they pay for your product or service. Like if you're posting something on LinkedIn, ask yourself, why? Why are you posting that? What's your end goal? And what are you gonna do to make it easy for people to take action? And by the way, I'm not saying that every LinkedIn post or tweet needs to have a big call to action, but I do feel like if you're trying to position yourself in a given way, you should have a crystal clear strategy about how you're doing such thing. And most tweets and posts should help serve that purpose, including blog posts. And I'll give you an example of someone that I think does a good job at this. Jay Kloss is the founder of a podcast and community called Creator Science, where he teaches others how to become effective content creators. He's not a massive influencer, but hey, I've seen him build up a decent following over the last year. And as a creator, one way in which he's done so is using Twitter. He's used Twitter to build up his brand, get engagement, share tips and tricks. And, you know, I do feel like with most of his tweets, there's always a, a why behind them. Like I can read a tweet of his and be like, okay, he's trying to get me to take action by doing this, or he's trying to get me to reply back to him to achieve that. You know, I can see that there's a why in what he does. And hey, other times he just shares funny pictures, which makes him look human as well. And that's cool. And I'm, I'm not saying that you can't do that. But yeah, just make sure you check off during these first couple of weeks what your marketing funnels look like. If you have a newsletter, make sure that all of your opt-in forms on your website are not just sending people to your email list, um, you know, to whatever email marketing service you're using, but ensure that the email sequence that you're putting them on takes them on a journey to take action. In essence, get your game plan in order and figure out the why behind each content piece, each video and each post that is meant to help you check off your game plan at the end of the quarter. In fact, here's a fun game for you. Every single one of my videos has a why, or at least I try to have a why behind every video, including this one. See if you can figure out what it is. Let me know down in the comment section below if there are any annual rituals that you like going through at the beginning of each year. I would love to learn more about those and I truly appreciate your time. I can't wait to continue to create content for you guys this year. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Thanks again, bye.